welcome to a video on thedislife.com. In this video we're going to have a quick look at a TP-Link 8 port gigabit uh, switch, managed switch actually. So the idea behind this is it's not just a like a, a dumb hub, it's a switch, you can do stuff with it. It's got you know, quality of service, things like that. So what we're going to do is unbox it and we'll have a look at what you can do with it. So in the box we get the usual instructions, a uh, resource CD and uh, an easy guide to set it up. Switch, power supply, and rubber feet. So here's the switch. Very simple uh, eight port connection, uh, gigabit switch, and on the back there is just a power for the power supply and the space for the feet there. So a nice little compact unit, nice and small, and uh, kind of thing you could put perhaps. Um, near your home theater PC or something like that just to give you some physical ports um, to connect your Xbox 360 up or Xbox One or something like that over gigabit rather than using your Wi-Fi. Okay, so I've got the switch plugged in now. Everything just works straight away, connects straight to it. So that's it really. You can just plug it in and you're and you're ready to go. You don't have to touch the any of the config at all. I'm gonna have a look at that to see what we can do with it. So I've installed the software that came on the disc. It detected the switch and um, I, I enabled me to set a username and password which I've done and now I've got this view of the switch here so uh, using this program so I can now uh, see the system info I can set it to DHCP or a fixed IP address so that's the for managing the switch like I said you don't have to do this it's all automatic um, I've set a user account in there uh, so you can back up and restore the settings you can reboot your switch uh, save you physically have to do it. You can do a reset and uh, you can do firmware upgrades. But where the advanced stuff comes in over a simple hub is you can then monitor the ports. So you can actually see what's what's going on there. So there you can see the ports are enabled and I can configure things like I can configure things like the, the, the port configurations, um, the speed. So you can see there that the actual speeds in use is shown up on there. Uh, so I've got some ports plugged in and some not plugged in. I can set the flow control wherever. So you've got s control over the ports and um, other settings like port trunks and so on. So you've got um, a lot of configuration. If this meet, if you understand the trunks and linking these networks to get linking networks together, then you'll 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 you know that these are quite useful if you want to do some more advanced networking stuff. So like I said, we've got a monitor on there, so we can. Um, we can have, actually have a look at what's on there, which is quite handy because of course you can do this remotely so you don't have to go and have a look at the device. So if you've got a simple hub there, you can't do that with this, you can. And uh, you can mirror ports and you can test cables and so on. You can even uh, set up VLANs um, so you can have, so you can segregate the network. Probably maybe a bit overkill for the home network, but uh, it can be good for security. You can separate off the Wi-Fi maybe and um, the physical part of your network, the wired part of your network into two separate segments, whatever you need to do on there. Probably what is interesting uh, for a home is you can set up quality of service so that if you've got your um, let's say you've got your Skype machine doing the podcast recording as, as I do on a particular port you can actually manage that and give it um, the highest premium uh, so uh, you could have your wireless plugged into one and then you see you could have your server that's uh, got all the content on that you want to have higher priority onto another port and so on. So you've got that control over the individual ports on here uh, which I think is really handy and um, you've got bandwidth control on there so you can actually restrict uh, individual uh, ports to buy the bandwidth. So if you've got something that's a hog you can restrict it. If something you've got which is um, like I said, your server and you want unrestricted, you can do that as well. So it gives you a good um, choice of flexibility um, for something which, if you just plug it into the back of your, say, your ADSL router, then you're not going to get that kind of control. So all these controls are really handy. Uh, they give you uh, some extra, fle extra flexibility. And I know I'm going to be using it to set up the Skype podcasting machine to give it the bandwidth control. So what about actual speed of moving files around? So let's see if we can have a look at that. 
So I'm going to try recording a file from my uh, Videobox server. So I'll take the file from the Videobox, which is on the same switch from the Videobox server, and copy that over and let's have a look at the details on that. Decent copy speed there from the from the server. So um, the problem the, the the bottleneck on that will be the um, USB Ethernet adapter I'm using on this device down here, and not the switch. So that's going to support gigabit on all the ports as well. So no problem copying data over like that. So that's it really. That's the TP-Link um, eight port gigabit smart switch, the actual model number is a TL-SG108E so simple device, out of the box just works straight away gives you the extra control with the software if you need it so uh, probably have more details of the link that goes along with the video so thanks for watching this one, I'll see you on the next one, bye